Hey everyone, I'm Tom the Dilettante, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Thrunite BSS V4 Tactical Flashlight. You don't have to be an EDC nut to appreciate a good flashlight, whether you're camping, working around the house, or looking for that damn bolt you dropped in the engine bay that never hit the ground, having a reliable light at hand is to me simply invaluable. Now make no mistake, I'm not a flashlight aficionado, but I'm definitely an impulse buyer when it comes to these things. There's not a junk drawer, glove box, center console, or nightstand in the house that doesn't have at least one light standing by. So when Through Night approached me asking me if I'd like to review one of their lights, I said, heck yeah, let's see what you got. And at about 66 bucks as of the time of this video, I'm curious to see how much bang for your buck you get with this particular light. In this review, I'll be covering what's in the box, flashlight features, operations, performance, pros and cons, and finally, my verdict. Chapters have been incorporated into this video for your convenience in case you'd like to skip around or click quickly revisit any portion of the review. This being my first through night, I wasn't exactly sure what to expect when I got it. So when this rather ordinary cardboard box arrived, I admit I was a little underwhelmed. Granted, it's certainly a step above the plastic wrapped end cap lights you might pick up at Home Depot or even your local gun range, but it wasn't as elegant as say this packaging of this Olight MR2 Pro Warrior. As I would come to learn, however, I did judge this book too quickly by its cover. Inside the box was a nicely packaged and well-protected light, with a quick note telling you the first thing you need to do in order to make it work. Tighten the head and tail caps to make contact with the battery. It comes with a 3100 mAh 18650 battery, an instruction booklet, holster, micro USB charging cable, belt clip, lanyard, red lens cover, two spare O-rings, a spare rubber USB cover, and a spare tail switch cover. Oh yeah, and a removable strike bezel. Now, right off the bat, I like that it comes with spare common wear items, like the O-rings and rubber covers. That's a nice touch. The belt clip is something I use on all my flashlights, and it clipped right on and secured very tightly. Unlike some cheaper lights I own, I don't feel the need to worry that this clip will fall off or lose tension anytime soon. The holster is okay. It's secured by a Velcro, which isn't my personal favorite. The belt loop is stitched on both ends, meaning that it's not easily used in a Molly configuration, and the bottom of the holster is somewhat open-ended versus closed. Now, I've worked on the ground enough times to know that if something can come unholstered or fall out of your pocket, it probably will, which is why I prefer my holsters with the closed end. Now, while I probably won't end up using the holster that came with this flashlight, it's really not that big of a deal breaker for me. After all, flashlight holsters are commonplace and cheap on Amazon, and I would encourage people to find an aftermarket holster that fits your specific needs and preferences anyway, regardless of the light you have. So what really matters here is the quality and performance of the light that you decide to put in it. The BSS V4 is available in a few different colors on Amazon and through Night's website. It comes in black, metal gray, camouflage, and desert tan. I opted for the desert tan version because if I like it, I plan on using it as my primary EDC light in my new to me GX470, which just so happens to be my next Overland build project, so stay tuned for that. It's definitely a solid feeling light. It's all aluminum with an anodized anti-abrasive surface, has good knurling for a solid grip in both bare and gloved hands, it's lightweight, clocking in at 5.2 ounces with the battery, measuring 5 and 5 8 inches or 143 millimeters long with the strike bezel. Drop that down to 5 and a quarter inches or 133 millimeters with the bezel removed. Is 1 inch or 26 millimeters in diameter and generally just feels really good in the hand. The V4 is IPX8 rated, meaning it's waterproof. With through night advertising, it can be submerged up to 2 meters or 6 and a half feet. It's marketed as impact resistant from a drop of one and a half meters or about five feet and can be used with or without the bad guy tenderizer at the lens. Speaking of which, the bezel on the V4 is definitely on the aggressive, dare I say, ostentatious side. Whether or not you like this thing is going to come down to personal preference. And the nice thing about the V4 is that this little per perforator is easily removed so you can carry it with or without it attached. I for one will be removing it because one, I can already see this thing chewing holes in my pocket. Two, it casts a silly looking shadow when in use, which we'll get to in the performance section of this video. And three, because I plan on using the included red lens cover, I just don't feel like having to deal with the bezel being in the way. Speaking of the red lens cover, this included feature is really nice to have in my opinion, and screws onto the end of the light without complaint. That is, until you drop it the wrong way. Anyway, the reason I like the red light is because it won't destroy my night vision. It's also considerate to others. How many of you have had an otherwise perfect night temporarily ruined because some jackass two sights down is playing Darth Maul with a moonbeam trying to find a bag of Doritos? Don't be that guy. Use a red light filter. 
Anyway, before we can do anything with this light, we gotta charge it. And that's accomplished with the standard micro USB cable, which is included. Charging status is easy to read with the side switch light showing red while charging and blue when full. If there happen to be any abnormal charging conditions, the light will flash purple. On a full charge, the V4 provides six different light intensities, not counting strobe, each with different run times. Here you can see the light is marketed as being able to run up to 56 days on its lowest setting called Firefly at a little over half a lumen, 55 hours on low at 33 lumens, and four and a half hours on medium at 350 lumens. High and turbo run times vary depending on how long you use them. On high, for example, you get 1,425 lumens for 130 seconds. After that, to keep itself from overheating, the light will decrease in intensity down to 634 lumens, where it can run for an additional 150 minutes. Similarly, turbo provides a little over 2,500 lumens for up to 125 seconds, or about two minutes, before the light steps itself down to 614 lumens, where it will allegedly run for another 147 minutes. The last mode, strobe, is marketed as being able to blast out 1200 lumens for a solid three and a half hours. So feature-wise, this light has a lot to offer. Let's see how well it actually performs. Operating the BSS V4 isn't too dissimilar from other tactical flashlights I've used, but not all the operations are covered in the instructions. There are two switches on the V4, a side switch and a tail or tactical switch. Let's start with the tail switch. The tail switch is flanked by a couple of guards with lanyard slots. In addition to providing a lanyard mounting location and some tail switch protection, it also serves as a convenient base in order to stand your flashlight upright on a flat surface. Beyond that though, I did find the placement of these guards a little annoying when it comes to tail switch operation. Depending on how you have the light rotated in your hand, these things tend to get in my way and make for an inconsistent feel. For example, if the guards are parallel to your thumb, you have clear access to the switch. If they're perpendicular to your thumb, they tend to get in the way of straight through operation and require you to come a little more over the top in order to activate the switch. This may or may not be an issue for you depending on how you like to grip your light. If your grip tends to be more towards the back of the light, for example, this probably won't affect you. The only reason I bring it up is because when I'm relying solely on tactile operations, I just like consistency. On to the switch itself. The switch serves as either a momentary switch with a light press or an on off switch when fully depressed. This tactical switch on the V4 serves only one purpose, to provide tactical light, which in this case means activating turbo mode at just over 2500 lumens. When the tail switch is activated, the side switch is deactivated. There is no cycling through light modes when using the tail switch, and if you use the tail switch to turn the light on, you have to use it to turn it off as well. The side switch is 180 degrees off from the USB charging cover, and serves a variety of purposes. First, it acts as a normal switch. Depress it once and the light turns on, with the switch illuminating blue for easy visual location in the dark. Depress it again and the light turns off. When the light's on, you can press and hold this side switch to cycle through low, medium, and high modes. Releasing the switch at your desired mode will save it in memory, so the next time you use a side switch, that's the mode that'll turn on. I like this memory feature a lot because it means if I have a preferred default mode, I don't need to cycle through all the modes each time just to get it. With the light off, pressing and holding the side switch activates Firefly mode. At just over half a lumen, this mode can be handy for really low light conditions when your night vision is already fully established. Searching around your tent or going to the bathroom in the middle of the night, for example. Tapping the side switch again turns Firefly mode off. With Firefly mode on, pressing and holding the side switch again will lock the flashlight, rendering both switches inoperable. When it's locked, the side switch will flash red if you try to use either switch and no light will be produced. To unlock the flashlight, simply press and hold the side switch again as if you're turning on Firefly mode. Double tapping the side switch will activate turbo mode, a single click will turn it off, and three clicks of the side switch will activate the strobe, again, a single click will turn it off. Lastly, the strike bezel can be easily removed based on your carry preference. If you'd like, in its place you can screw on the red lens cover. With the cover in place, the luminosity decreases across all modes, but certainly not so much as to render the light useless. On the contrary, I think the benefits of using red light, such as preserving night vision, less light pollution, and attracting fewer bugs, makes keeping this lens alongside this light totally worth it. For performance, let's first look at the shape of the light. At about five feet with the strike bezel on, you can see the odd flower pattern shadow cast by the bezel that I was talking about. From the same distance with the bezel removed, you can see that the pattern is a bit wider and not as funny looking. If having a strike bezel is important to you, then that's fine. Just be prepared for a somewhat narrower flower-shaped beam as a trade-off. Since I plan on using this without the bezel, let's conduct the rest of our tests with it off. Starting with simple around the house uses, medium and high modes worked well for me on close-up purposes like looking under a cabinet or under the hood. 
There's a hot spot in the middle of the light, but it's not really noticeable in these close-up use cases. Indoors in a typical room, the V4 is a perfectly functional light and then some. For example, at night with the lights on, here's what my kitchen looks like fully illuminated. It's a little yellow and blown out right now because I'll be using the same camera settings for all my tests to try to give you the best representation of what to expect. Those settings are here for your reference. Shining the light around the room on low is good enough for localized use, but not much more. I'd probably use this mostly to light my way and not destroy my night vision. On medium, the difference between 33 and 350 lumens becomes very apparent. Notice the hotspot in the middle and the surrounding halo. It's a pretty bright and wide flood at close range, and I thought it worked quite well. High was almost overkill in a small room like this. It definitely put light where I needed it, but I gotta admit, I was seeing spots afterwards. Next, I wanted to see how well it illuminated a room. I don't know about you, but standing a light upright on a flat surface to illuminate a room is certainly something I found myself doing in something like, say, a power outage. On low, the V4's 33 lumens doesn't provide much more than mood lighting. There's barely even enough light to get the autofocus to work. But if you need to pull a lot of life out of your battery, it's probably enough to at least get by. Medium produced ample light to work by, and I wouldn't need to worry about the light overheating and stepping down in luminosity over time, and I should get a solid four and a half hours out of this at this setting. Finally, on high, it was nearly as bright as if the lights were on in the room. However, after a couple of minutes, brightness would decrease to a little over 600 lumens, which would still be twice as much as medium, but I'd only have a couple hours of runtime after that. Speaking of runtime, let's see how the V4 performs when you leave turbo mode on for a while. On turbo mode, you get over 2,500 lumens, but only for a while until the LED starts stepping down so as not to overheat. I got full strength up until about the minute 10 mark before the light started to gradually decrease, and by about the 2 minute 10 mark, luminosity had decreased to what should be a steady 614 lumens. That's not far off from the 125 seconds marketed, but keep in mind, what I observed was about 70 seconds of full turbo, followed by 60 seconds of steadily decreasing light before it got to this point. Interestingly enough, at about 13 and a half minutes, the luminosity decreased again. By how much, I'm not sure, but subjectively speaking, it was about as bright as the high mode. After 15 minutes, the LED will naturally be getting pretty hot. I measured 114 degrees Fahrenheit, or 45 and a half degrees Celsius, near the lens, which is warm but tolerable. I mean, you'll burn your eyes out before you burn your hands off with this light, and I'm fine with that. Next, let's take this thing for a spin outdoors. The fence at the other end of my test yard is about 75 feet or 23 meters away. To the naked eye, low provided just enough light to see by, but proved almost too low to film. Medium, high, and turbo, however, were easy to film and provided plenty of light to investigate what might be going on downrange. Turbo performed especially well in this setting, fully illuminating the back of the yard clear as day. For the fun of it, here's what strobe looks like, but keep in mind, filmed at 24 frames per second, what you see on camera doesn't quite do it justice. Either way, I wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of this mode in the darkness, that's for sure. To test charge time, I left the light on high until it was completely dead. Once dead, it took 3 hours and 48 minutes to completely charge using the included USB cable. If that's too much for you, then I would suggest picking up a couple extra 18650 batteries or at least getting a quick charger. Onto the IPX8 rating, the rubber covers and O-rings kept the light free of any water ingress after giving it a 15 minute bath. There was no visible signs of moisture in the lens, under the charge port cover, or in the battery compartment. Finally, after all my other testing was done, it was time to see if this thing is in fact impact resistant up to a meter and a half as marketed. To test this, I simply performed 10 drops from elbow height onto my concrete patio. For me, that's about a height of 1.1 meters, and it seemed to be a reasonable example of how someone is likely to drop this thing. Now, after this mini torture test, I'm happy to report that the light continued to work and function just fine. And while it suffered some cosmetic wear and tear, the catastrophic issue I faced was the deformation of the threads at the lens. A one meter drop just proved to be too much for the thin walled aluminum around the threads, and unfortunately, they're now too garbled up to accept either the strike bezel or the red light filter. So, I guess the takeaway here is either keep the bezel or red light filter installed to give the lens area more rigidity, or if you remove them, like I did, don't drop the light on its head. As with many pros and cons, these are going to be subjective, and in some cases based simply on personal preference. Starting with the pros. 1. Firefly mode. I like having a very low light option for things like rummaging around a tent while camping, or digging through a backpack on a red eye flight. Something just bright enough to see by, but not obnoxious. 2. The battery. The 18650 battery is pretty commonplace, so chances are if you have multiple tactical lights, you can interchange batteries as needed. It also provided ample working time for my typical uses, and charged up from dead in under 4 hours. 3. Red lens cover. 
I've paid more for lights that didn't come with a red light option, and I really like that this one does. It sucks that I damage my light so that I can't use it anymore, but assuming you don't beat up your light like I did, it's a great option for when you want to maintain light discipline or preserve your night vision. 4. Extra common wear items. Providing extra o-rings and rubber covers for the charging port and tail switch is just a nice touch in my book. Time will tell if the light lasts long enough to need replacement of these items, but so far I'm optimistic. 5. Weight. The V4 is on the lighter side of similar lights that I own, and let's face it, when it comes to EDC items, weight matters. I would have no problem strapping this to my belt or pack all day. 6. Removable strike bezel. I don't always want a strike bezel on my lights, and this one in particular screams more tactical than tactical, so the fact that I can remove it is a pro in my book. 7. Ease of use. It's only got two buttons, and once you learn your way around how to activate the different modes, it's simple and predictable, which is exactly what I'm looking for in a light. As far as cons, I honestly don't have many for this light, but to ensure a full objective review, here's some considerations that might help you determine whether or not this is the right light for you. Number one, micro USB charging port. I simply don't like micro USB. I've had more long-term failures of this USB format over any others with various devices, and with USB-C becoming more the norm, I would have preferred that instead. Two, side switch feel. The side switch is difficult for me to differentiate by feel from the USB cover. With gloved hands, it'd be darn near impossible. I overcome this by simply positioning the belt clip so that I just need to follow it down to the switch. You might have different trick for finding the switch, but because there's not much to differentiate it by feel alone, I think it would behoove you to have a secondary tactile reference available to locate it quickly and consistently. 3. Tail switch function. On one hand, the tactical switch provides only tactical light. This can be handy because there's no way you're going to accidentally activate a lower light setting when you need instant and reliable max illumination. You know what you're going to get. On the other hand, the tactical switch only provides tactical light. So if you like being able to activate different light settings using the tail switch, that's just not going to be an option with this light. 4. Side switch deactivation. As I mentioned earlier, the side switch is deactivated when you turn the light on with the tail switch. Whether or not you like this feature will boil down to personal preference. Some might prefer the side switch remain functional so you can cycle through different light settings after it's turned on regardless of how you turned it on. Or maybe you just want the option to turn it off with either switch in case you change your grip while you're using it. Regardless, that's not going to be an option with the V4. Once you turn the light on with the tail switch, you can only turn it off with the tail switch. I happen to like that the side switch is disabled this way because I don't need to worry about accidentally turning the light off or switching modes if I'm shifting the light around in my grip. No matter how I toss this thing around or move it in my hands, it's unlikely that I'm going to disrupt the light that I've got. 5. Tail switch guards. Depending on how the light is clocked in your grip, the tail switch guards might get in the way of your thumb. Depending on the size of your hands and your grip, this might not be an issue for you, but it was for me. 6. The holster. The holster that comes with the light uses Velcro, which I'm simply not a fan of. And due to its belt loop design, it isn't easily attached to Molly gear, which in my opinion limits its versatility. This is more of a minor nuisance though, since a variety of flashlight holsters are easy to find and relatively inexpensive. 7. Lastly, vulnerable lens threads. As you saw, if you drop this thing just the right way without the bezel or red lens cap installed, you're gonna bugger off the threads. It's impact resistant after all, not impact proof, and while the light still functions as advertised after a series of drops, I have to admit I'm pretty bummed that I ruined my threads and can't screw anything on them anymore. But I did it all for you, and if you found this video helpful, well, then it was worth it. So what's my verdict? Well, until Thrunite reached out to me, I'll be honest, I hadn't really heard of them. My collection of lights includes brands like Surefire, Olight, Phoenix, and a handful of other generic brands. But I'm glad that they did reach out to me because I really do like this light. My Olight and Phoenix lights cost me 100 bucks or more each, and at 66 bucks as of this video, the Thrunite BSS V4 gives you a pretty darn good bang for your buck. The low, medium, and high modes provide a diverse enough range of lights for 95% of my uses. The grip is solid. The fact that it's waterproof and mostly impact resistant means I'm not going to be too worried about putting it through its paces. The single purpose tactical switch on the tail takes the uncertainty out of what light I'm going to get when using it. It can stand vertically by itself to light up a room, comes with a red lens option, firefly mode, and it doesn't use any proprietary batteries or chargers. Overall, this light packs everything I need into a lightweight, durable, affordable package. So not only am I going to keep and use this light as my primary EDC in my truck from now on, I've already ordered another one for my EDC collection just to have. If you're interested in picking up one of these, please check out my affiliate Amazon link in the description. The price is the same to you, but I may earn a small commission if you purchase using this link, which goes to help support this channel. Also, if you found this review helpful, please click that like button to let the YouTube algorithm know to share it with others. If it wasn't helpful, well, then let me know what I could be doing to improve. 
That's it for today. Thank you for your time as always. And until the next time, this is Tom the Dilettante saying, have a good one. Take care.